Welcome back everyone. I'm busy preparing for a few yellowfish trips to the Vaal River and uh, they are a few very easy flies that I'm busy tying. Very very simple patterns and um, I'm going to share one of them with you. Again it's a kind of a fly that it's ideal for a beginner that starts fly tying. It's, a, it's a, what I call the Antron caddis or Antron rockworm. Uh, it's tied on a grip 14682 size 12 and I use a 2.4 millimeter brass bead with it. Now I tie it in 12s and 14s. When I tie it in a 14 I use a 2 millimeter brass bead and it's a little bit of an undersized bead for the for the hook but I use the fly as a point fly and I don't want it to be too heavy. You can also tie it without uh, um, without a bead at all, or you can tie it with a tungsten bead. Uh, very simple fly. You're going to need some Antron yarn, uh, a scud back, and a camel dubbing. And then a simple monofilament and thread. I use a 8.0 grip thread. And you start by covering the hook shank with thread. And stop sort of just just above the point of the hook. You take your thread forward to about two th uh, just a third behind the eye, a third of the hook shank, around there, and you tie your monofilament in on top of the hook shank. Now what I do is, and the reason for tying it in there and not closer is because you want to leave that space between the, the abdomen and the bead. But you want to leave that open because we need that space to tie thorax in. And what I do is I start on top and as I go wrap backwards I slide the monofilament to the far side of the hook, to the side of the of the hook shank and I just keep tying it all the way past the hook the point and I stop the thread above the uh, I stop the thread above the uh, barb of the hook. Put that aside. Next material you're going to tie in is the scud back. Now you, there's, it's, it's available in uh, 2.5 uh, 2 and 3 millimeter widths and I use a 2.5 mil on this. Take your thread back to that point where the monofilament started and you tie your scud back in right there. Um, the color that I use for both, and I'm going to tie both colors in this video, uh, the color scud back that I use for both the, the tan and the chartreuse rockworm is uh, golden olive. It's available, the stuff is available in many different colors. You can change that color if you, if you feel like it, but I've found that those are the colors that work best for me. And you tie that all the way to the end and you stop above the the bob of the hook. Last material, you're going to take your thread forward again, some open wraps to there, and we're going to tie in the Antron yarn. Now I use a, a chartreuse, I'm going to start with a chartreuse, and there's no fancy techniques to this other than, than maybe in the thorax. Take the chartreuse Antron yarn, cut the end so it's nice and straight. Place that on top of the hook and tie it in right there. Now the reason for tying all the materials in from there backwards is because we don't want the, the abdomen, we don't want to tie all those ends in at the back. Then we're going to have a very thick back side on the abdomen, it's going to taper forward and it's, not, it's going to be out of proportion. So that is why we tie all the materials in to, to make sure we level that abdomen out. And we tie that in all the way to the back. And forward again with the thread. Now this time you can take the thread all the way forward to behind the bead to keep it out of the way. And we're going to twist the antron yarn to make a little rope, a tight rope. I'm just going to go and wind this up, it's coming undone here. Here 
we go. And we can just twist that and twist it counterclockwise. If you're right hand tire, twist it counterclockwise. The reason for that is when you tie it, when you wrap it around the hook, it's just going to twist a little bit tighter. If you twist it clockwise and you're right hand tire and you wrap it around the hook, you can actually unwind it. So make sure you keep uh, you twist it counterclockwise. If you're left hand tire, then you do it the other way around. Now I'm using a rotary vise and it's very easy to to wrap this instead of wrapping the whole card or the, if you've got it in a bobbin it's probably easier but my Antronion is in a card and then I just use the rotary vise to get all those wraps in place just make sure they're all nice and tight next to each other and this goes very quick it's uh, very simple quick technique the only thing that you need to remember is that your thread is winding around the hook as well so you have to go and unwind that thread at some point and then you can go further just give that a few more twists And you stop the entrant yarn right there. Take the thread back. Tie that off. And cut the entrant yarn out of the way. Close that in with a few neat wraps. Next step is to take your back strap or, or scut back, fold that over. Now these these caddis lava, if you look at them, you'll see they are bright green. You get some tan ones. I'll tie a tan one just off to this. And they've got a slightly darker back, and that's the reason for the uh, scut back. And you tie that down and you cut that out of the way. Next step is the monofilament. Now what I do with the monofilament is I, I wrap that counterclockwise or, or the other way around if you if you are uh, depending on whether you're left or right that tire. So it cross over the Antron yarn wraps and you need to do about depending on the size of the fly but between seven and nine wraps to give it nice evenly spaced segments um, not don't just do two or three quick wraps do, uh, um, uh, uh, do at least seven to nine evenly spaced wraps and that will that will give it some nice more realistic segments and you tie that off right there cut that excess off and there's a nice darker scut back. Now the last step, and this is probably the most difficult technique in this fly, is the dubbing. And I use a camel dubbing um, and a split thread technique. Now I've got a video that uh, uh, demonstrates the split thread technique very nicely, so I'll, I'll link that video below. And you can go and have a look at that as well. I'm not going to go through all the steps here. So you take your dabbing needle and split that thread there. And then you put your dabbing in that split. You can wax it if you need to, if you want to. I don't, don't really wax it. It's not like a of a bushy uneven 
brush. Cover that, twist the thread, and you're going to wind all those fibers up in the thread. You can make a loop as well, but um, I don't. I don't really do a loop with this with this fly. It's just quicker and easier to to split the thread. And there is a the, the, the same video on dubbing technique show the loop technique as well. So it's entirely up to you what you what you want to do. And then you wind that around, pull all the material back, fibers, and you go all the way forward to the bead. And that's a nice bushy thorax. Push the bead back a little bit to make sure I can get that thread in behind the bead. And you will finish that two or three times. I don't really use glue or resins or anything on these beads, on these on these flies. It's a very quick and easy pattern to tie. There, and cut that. Now, in the last step, what I do is I've got one of these nice CNF um, dubbing needles. I take that brush and I brush that dubbing out a little bit before I trim it. I'll show you brush that out nicely. And then I just take a pair of scissors and I trim the top and the sides a little bit. And you leave those fibers at the bottom just to imitate legs. And that's the uh, chartreuse antron rockworm. Now I've tied a, 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 a one in ten already to show you. And there's the, I'm just going to put it in the vise to show you. That is the uh, uh, exactly the same materials. Uh, brown camel dubbing, same size bead, same hook, same thread, and same color golden olive scud back for this fly. It is just the color of the antron that changes. Now the other thing that you can do is to tie it without a bead. But if you still want to add a bit of weight, add weight before you tie the dubbing. And you can just close that dubbing, that, 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 that uh, lead wire, with the dubbing and to add it in the thorax area and the, it's, again it's a very simple fly it's a very successful fly you can tie it with different size beads um, but like I say I'd like to fish it as a point fly so I tie it with a lighter um, a lighter brass bead uh, please subscribe to the channel please like the video please comment tie a bunch go and fish them and let me know how it goes thanks for watching